What's up, hungry people? Today, we're making something that I've wanted to make ever since I first watched the movie, the Cubanos from Chef. If you've never heard of Chef, pause this video and go find a place to watch it right now. Rent it if you have to. It's hands down one of the best movies of the last decade, and not for the reasons you might think. You don't even need to be a foodie to appreciate this movie. While the main plot revolves around Jon Favreau's character reigniting his love for food, it's a comedy drama movie about reinventing yourself, learning to get back to the basics and the overall feel-good theme of father-son relationship building, all from the back of a Miami food truck. The movie itself is loosely based on Roy Choi's involvement in the food truck industry, and Roy himself sent Jon Favreau to train in French culinary school just to prepare for his role in this movie. And the training certainly paid off, according to John himself. You can certainly feel John's ease in the kitchen throughout the movie, but especially in the opening scenes when he is preparing some of the most beautifully delicious food I have ever seen. You can tell a lot of love and crafting went into each of the dishes so that they would be visually stunning, and just from appearance alone, you know they probably got to taste pretty good too. The star of this movie, though, is truly the Cubanos that Martin whips up from a large pork shoulder and a variety of citrus and herbs. Roy's preparation of the pork shoulders is definitely one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie. I'd be lying if I said that I didn't cook like this sometimes. I mean, just watching this scene is making me hungry right now. And I've never wanted to taste something more than I've wanted to taste this pork when they were sampling it. In real life, this recipe is based on Roy Choi's famous mojo pork recipe that he uses on his own real life food trucks. Fortunately for us, recreating this dish at home is actually relatively easy. Since we aren't cooking for a crowd, we'll start with a pound and a half of boneless pork shoulder also known as pork butt. And then the ingredients for Roy Choi's Mojo Pork Marinade are olive oil, fresh squeezed orange juice, fresh lime juice, chopped cilantro, chopped mint, fresh oregano, lots of garlic, cumin, lime zest, orange zest, and some salt and pepper. Then we'll go ahead and snap a lid onto our bowl and give it a nice shaky shake. You can also use a baggie or similar container for your pork. The most important thing here is that the pork is completely covered in marinade. Let the pork chill overnight, or even longer. I let mine marinate for a full 24 hours before bringing it back to room temperature prior to cooking it. You'll want to cook the pork on a rack on a foil-lined pan for best results, and for easy cleanup. Cook the pork starting at 425 for 15 minutes, and then at 350 for 30 minutes per pound. My pork butt is just over a pound and a half and took approximately 50 minutes to cook all the way through. Since it would be a shame to waste the marinade, I'm gonna go ahead and use an immersion blender to make it into a smooth sauce and then simmer it down on the stove top to make it safe to eat. Definitely do not consume the marinade straight from the bowl. I brought it to a boil and then simmered it for the entire time the pork was cooking for a nice, thick, and tangy dipping sauce. When the pork has reached 160 degrees Fahrenheit in the center, let it rest for about 20 to 30 minutes before cutting it to really seal in all the juicy goodness. When you start carving, you'll see what I mean. The long rest is worth it. Now we just need to carve this bad boy up. I cut my pork into about half inch thick slices. Of course, this is the moment I've been waiting for. A quick taste test. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. The next step is to fire up your flat top griddle. I had to improvise for a few ingredients. We are in the middle of a pandemic after all. But these are the key components to a perfect Cubano. Thin sliced ham leg or deli ham. I just used some good deli ham. Swiss cheese. Thin sliced dill pickle or butter pickle slices. Melted salted butter. American mustard. And Cuban bread. I had to substitute some country French loaf for mine. You basically want a crusty bread with a soft inside. Don't use French baguette. 
Country French will give you a close comparison to Cuban bread if you can't find any at your grocery store. To test that the griddle is hot, just like Jon Favreau's character shows his son and chef, we'll give the griddle a quick splash of water. If it fizzles away, you know your grill is ready. Go ahead and slap on some ham and sliced pork. You just want to heat it until it is hot and the ham is starting to brown. Then we'll move the ham and the pork onto the bread and arrange it so that the meats are covering the bread from end to end. Then we'll put on our Swiss cheese slices and then the pickle slices. Then we'll swap over to the top of the loaf and spread on the mustard nice and thick like so that it covers the bread from crust to crust. Assemble the sandwich and then give it a generous brushing of butter. The butter is what makes a cubano a cubano. Don't forget to give the grill a good brush of butter as well. Then give the sandwich a nice tight press. It's important to watch the sandwich until the cheese is melted and the bread is golden brown. Okay, so mine might be a little bit more than golden, but it's still nice and crispy and the cheese is melted all the way. Give your sandwich a couple of nice chops. And then dip it into the tangy mojo sauce. They are sweet, savory, and crunchy, and hands down delicious. I mean, just look at that cheese pull action. I have straight up been craving this Cuban sandwich since I first watched Chef way back in 2014. It's definitely my favorite feel good movie. Absolutely worth the watch. What fictional feast should I cook up next? Leave your suggestions down in the comments below. If you're still hungry, don't forget to flip that sub button and ring the dinner bell to be notified of my latest recipes and foodie adventures that I post every week. As always, you can find this recipe and many others with step-by-step -step instructions over at thestarvingchefblog.com. I hope you all enjoyed, and I'll talk to you soon.